welcome back. Uh, now we're proceeding onward. This may be the last video in this series. Uh, we'll see. Um, sometimes it just takes longer uh, than even I anticipate. Um, I'm just coming in here and strengthening my darks. I'm going to be working into a lot smaller brushes here in just a minute. Uh, this just helps me to, um, I always come back and reestablish my darks. I always look to see if something got lost with all the other work that goes on. As we've come up into our lights, our darks kind of get diffused and we lose some of them. This isn't too bad. Um, hung on to them pretty well here. Burnt carmine, a little bit of burnt sienna. They look darker in the video, I noticed, than um, they actually are on my palette. So, um, if you're trying to do something similar, don't go black. I mean, even these colors down in here, I know on the video they look kind of blackish, but they're not. There's a lot of warm tones in them and violets and different colors so we want to uh, not go too dark I say I'm gonna to do these ears I'm gonna get a smaller brush warm out again today it's already in the 80s out here so um, and my videos will be just 30 minutes they do shut off at 30 minutes so <laughs> whether I want them to or not so it's okay it's a learning experience for me Um, what do I put in my paint set when I when I go out painting? I make sure I have my easel, of course. I make sure I have my oil paints. Um, usually it's more of a limited palette. Um, I take paper towels. I take a garbage bag with me. Um, I do notice with the video, though, if the wind comes up, that it's a plastic grocery bag. It really starts to chatter, so I have to keep it tucked away. Um, I take water, coffee if I want it. Um, in this case, I bring my camera, my tripod, um, my phone, of course. Uh, so it takes a little bit to uh, get prepped. Uh, and then I always spend a few minutes um, breathing and getting settled and focused um, because sometimes by the time I get everything gathered up and ready to go I'm a little bit worn out <laughs> I'm getting old I guess um, so not really I just uh... so I'm, I'm reinforcing some colors where I see them what I love about oil paints, see, I could take this transparent um, burnt sienna and I can scramble it over these colors that are already here. And it goes on like a glaze. Um, some people would call that glazing, where you can come over this light, like this color here. And do you see how it glazes over? And it puts this really. Uh, pretty hue on it so and I am seeing this color reflected around in the water over here because this is our tree trunk that's being reflected the tree trunk is something that uh, has gotten a little bit lost in this reflection uh, so I'm working on smoothing out that surface tension
and just bringing some of these other colors in. I think it's kind of exciting when we get almost done with the painting. It's been a lot of work, right? And um, it's a process. And like I said, there is there just aren't any shortcuts uh, to building a painting. Sometimes the hardest part is just deciding what to paint. Um, and if you get like me, where uh, sometimes you have so many things you want to paint, you can't commit to one. And other times you just can't seem to get off of high center to get one going. And it's all part of it, it is. This guy's shoulder needs to be redrawn a bit. Um, he really needs to, oh, it comes out up here. Oh yeah, see, there's his shoulder. How is he holding himself up without that shoulder? <laughs> That's what has to make sense, too, is the anatomy. The anatomy has to make sense. Otherwise, see, this is coming on this beautiful dry scramble, bringing over this like a glaze. And it goes on so prettily and so nicely. And that's part of why I go through so much trouble to build up some of this other stuff up and around it, uh, whatever I'm painting, because I know that some of these um, colors, these, especially the transparent ones, um, white is not transparent, it's opaque. Um, but like this burnt sienna that you can come in with this and, and go over another color and it's got this beautiful glaze to it. Um, make some of these finishing touches. I'm going to take a little risky move here and bring this canvas up right here. Let's see if she'll stay put for me. Oh, excuse my arm. All right. And if it'll stay out of the paint, bring this back down and clip it. Tricky, tricky stuff. Sometimes. Um, if I want to pop up my orange, uh, my burnt sienna into a little bit hotter color. Okay. All right. You stay down there if you want. I can bring this um, cad red light into it. And a little bit of the cad yellow. I'm going to see what that does to hit some of these hot spots where the sun is hitting them. I'm going to put a little yellow ochre into that. Oops. Okay. Because the sun does come in. Okay, that's getting more golden. Let's go back to the orange a bit and the yellow. Now I'm having to lean in and... Uh, the stretch on the back. The sisal is easier to work with if I'm standing up, uh, but I don't stand anymore. <laughs> I have a painting injury on my foot from standing so much because um, I used to carry, uh, hold all my weight on my left leg and stand for hours and paint, not realizing that um, I was sort of damaging things. So now I'm very careful. The other thing I do, I don't paint for 12 hours at a time anymore. I try to, um, years ago, I finally taught myself to have balance. I could be obsessive painter, but sometimes artists, are that they're just that's what that's what happens it kind of takes over and um, life gets out of balance so now I, I work for it the most like out here I make two 30-minute videos 
at a time and then I could for the day. I'm bringing in my colors and uh, creating my forms. I'm bringing in the, the warmest, the warm stuff now. So when I stop and I'm pausing, I'm studying, at this stage you end up doing a lot more observation and less painting. I'm going to introduce another brush. This brush, you see the shape of it? It's called a cat's tongue, and it is shaped like the tip of a cat's tongue. 